What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mike's Tool Shed. Back in the garage. Back in the bucket. <laughs> this episode is about this new acquisition I have right here. This is the, uh, ultimately, this is a Fluke Networks wire tracing device. And it's really handy and can save you a lot of time. It comes with the Fluke Networks Pro 3000 probe. And it comes with the Fluke Networks Pro 3000 toner. Both of these devices work together. Oh, this comes with this... Nice stylish carrying case, probe, and the toner fit in here. You have extra battery storage. They both take 9 volts. You have instruction pouch here. And if you want to look like a huge nerd, you can put this on your belt if you would wish to do so. So it comes with a nice case, keeps it protected. This is a little bit more of a delicate thing. This isn't like a hammer or a screwdriver. You don't want to throw this in your van. <clears throat> so... Ultimately, what I use this for is wire tracing. It has a few other features that I don't really use, but it shines at wire tracing. So, what you have here is the probe. This is what you walk around with and try to find the wire that you have this piece hooked to. It has a speaker. It has a volume knob right here, depending on how loud it is where you're at. And it has a nice little headphone jack right there. So, if you're in an occupied office and... Uh, Karen is in a conference call, and you're you're making noise. Uh, she's gonna give you a look, and then she's gonna email your company, and then your boss is gonna call you shortly, saying, "What the hell are you doing? You're pissing Karen off over there." <laughs> so you can have the headphones and not disturb anybody. So this is one part, and the other part is this tone generator. And the long and short of it is that you have a particular cable you need to identify. You hook this to one conductor, you hook this to the other conductor, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, because you don't hook it to energized circuits. That's a no-no. This is not rated for that. Um, I think the manual says something like 60 volts DC and like 40 volts AC, which basically means don't hook it to energized stuff. This doesn't like that. It's not going to go well if you hook this up to 120 volts. So you hook this up to your cable. You go in search of the other end of the wire, and what it does is you pr you press this button. It's it's off all the time unless you're pressing the button, so there's no on-off switch or anything like that. And as you bring it closer to what this is hooked to, you hear that tone. It does two tones, solid, and then an alternating tone. I, I think me and everyone else thinks that the alternating tune is easier to pick up because it doesn't sound that clear when you actually have it hooked to wires, you know, that are already ran throughout a, a space. Um, it's, it's, it's nice and clean because I got it touched right to the other device, but sometimes you, you can't quite hear it or it's faint. That's why the volume knob is, is good because sometimes um, it's so faint you need it at full blast volume to hear it. Depending on how the conductor goes and what it's ran next to and if it's terminated or not, all depends on on how loud it's going to be. So sometimes you need to crank it up, and it, this thing is still not that loud. So, like I said, it does an alternating tone and a solid tone. Um, I always put it on alternating, which it blinks to the alternating tone. Um, this also does it does two pairs of cat. Man, my fingernails, man. <laughs> I need a manicure. It does two pairs of a Cat5. It does the, the, the two middle pairs. So and that's good enough. I don't really use the Cat5 attachment that much. I don't think I've ever used it. Um, I'm not running entire um, network systems or anything like that. The Cat5 that I run is very rare and they're usually um, not hard to figure out what they are. But for a network guy, the, you know, nobody labeled anything. I think this comes in really handy for network guys. You plug this into the jack, and then you go to your, uh, you know, data cabinet or whatever you have everything terminated at, and you can go wire by wire. Don't really use that. These guys are the ones that I use. And might I say that these are really nice. These are really nice alligator clips. They have, like, different facets and different parts. You get, like, a tooth part there. You have a smoother... C kind of part there, and then you even have, you can see these spikes there, there you go, and they land on this little brass looking uh, pad here, so you could put a very tiny gauge wire in there, and you're going to get a good connection with those little spikes, I never use that really either, if you're using like 20, 22 gauge, something really, really tiny, it's going to be able to grip onto it and send that signal out that you need. 
I hook that up to uh, a white, and I hook this up to a black. Color doesn't matter. It does the same thing either way on on a dead wire. Um, white does matter for one particular feature, but for regular wire tracing, it doesn't matter. Hook this up to the white, hook this up to the black, and then I go on a search, and I'm looking for that tone, trying different wires to see where it's the loudest. Um, when wires are terminated in a space, like say they were all landed in a panel, all the grounds are landed on the same bar and all the neutrals are landed on the same bar, there is some bleed off where you're not going to get a nice crisp tone like that. You're going to pick that tone up on the incorrect wires because it's bleeding off onto other ones via the terminations. And you're basically sending that tone out to the, almost the entire space of every bit of wire because all the grounds are together and all the neutrals are together. So this works really, really well when the wires are not terminated. But you can use it when the wires are terminated. You just got to find out where the signal is the loudest. Um, you're going to faintly hear it on some of the incorrect wires. But when you hear that thing coming through clear, you know you're on the right one. So I do suggest if you can, if you can help it, have unterminated wires. And you'll get a really nice clear signal and you'll get a real positive feedback from it. And you're going to know you're on the right wire. But, so like if you're in a space and some dipshit pulled all your feeds and you're like, hey, Kevin, where's the labels? Oh, uh, oh, damn, dude. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Go out to my van and get the little black case that looks like this. And let me show you how to use it. And you're going to find, you're going to identify all these wires. And uh, you go to hook it, you go to the different locations around the space, hooking these up. You go back to the panel. And if they're unterminated, this thing works really well. So this, this guy right here does some, a few things by itself. Um, I don't really use the solo features of this, this part but I'll tell you about them. So it does continuity. So even if the device is off, no lights, the device is off. It does continuity, which every meter that I have and pretty much every meter in existence does continuity. And most of them have a tone. It'll beep when you have continuity. So I've never really used that, but it does it. There you go. You can, you can see that you have continuity. So if you twist up the black and the white on a feed, and then you go hook these up to different sets of wires, you're going to get real positive uh, feedback from it that way. If that light lights up, you know you're on that conductor. And then maybe just to double check, undo the continuity, touch them again, and make sure the continuity went away. Fail safe, you know you're on that, you know you're on that, that cable. Don't really use that. I just found out by reading the instructions, which is a really crazy thing that I just did, is it also does polarity, and I can actually see this coming in handy doing fire alarm systems, because um, if you do a lot of fire alarm systems, you know that the uh, we my company in particular we only use uh, MC fire alarm wire, and the conductors inside the fire alarm wire are black and white, and a lot of people screw this up, and they think the black is the negative. No, wait, I'm confused now. <laughs> they think the Black is the positive and the white is the negative. But in DC, the black is the negative. But you have a cable that has a black and a white in it. So since the black, there's, you know, it matches up with, the, say, a car battery, the black is the negative, so you make the black the negative. And the white is your red, is the positive. A lot of people screw that up the way that we do it. it um, they, they get AC and DC black mixed up and... Maybe somebody switched the wires. Hey, hook up all these devices. And they put all the blacks on the, the plus sign and all the whites on the negative. That's not the case. So if you had reverse polarity out on a device, you could find it out with this. So on this 9-volt battery, the flared out end right there, that's the positive and the smooth one's the negative. So I'm going to intentionally hook this up backwards. And you'll see the device here lights up red. Now, that means no, wrong. If you hook it up red to positive, black to negative, uh, what the hell? <laughs> right, this is, what, why isn't this working? <laughs> what the hell? Oh, I, don't, I have it on continuity. There we go, I had it on continuity. You're gonna get continuity through a DC battery. Red to positive, black to negative, and if you can see that, it's lighting up green. I mean, all good, you're correct. 
So if you had, you know, you're way down a space and you're wondering if the polarity got mixed up on something DC, this will tell you. You know, the green light will tell you that it's uh, it's correct, or the red light will tell you that it's incorrect. So that's pretty much everything that this device does. Um, it comes in really handy. I had to buy it because I was on a job um, and I, need, I had some mystery wires and I didn't know where they were. And I had like three wires by the panel. I didn't know what they were for. And I had three or four wires throughout the space that I didn't know what they were. And this probably saved me like an hour of troubleshooting with continuity, just toning them and, and figuring out which one was which. Every other job I've ever been on, I could always borrow this thing from somebody. A lot of people have this, but I never had one of my own, and I never needed one. And this damn job I was on was right next to Home Depot, and I spent so much damn money over there because I'm like, oh, well, I need it. It's going to help me do this, and it'll come, you know, come in handy in the future. But I'd go over there for some, you know, a couple of washers, and I'd come back with a freaking drill bit set that was on sale. You know, it, that happened almost every time. I went over there. I bought the Milwaukee 18 volt fan on a day it was really hot and it was on sale. They just they got me every time I went over there. This was one of the things that I got and it came in really handy and it saved me a lot of time. And I like it. Um, like I said, it does a couple other things. It does the the polarity, the continuity, and the wire tracing, and it does you can hook it up to Cat5. So it's a pretty powerful little device. I think it cost me like 80 bucks. I think it used to be more expensive. And it's uh it's not it's Fluke Networks. I think Fluke bought the company that used to make this. Which I don't remember what it was. They bought the company and then just branded these things as Fluke Networks. So I don't think this is a Fluke designed device. But uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm, I maybe may or may not have mentioned don't use this on live circuits. I think I did. But just in case I didn't, don't use it on live circuits. It doesn't like it. So that's it. My new wire tracing device. So anytime I need to trace wires, I'm all set. So. That's it, and thanks for watching.